The story you're about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. A notorious hoodlum in your city has been shot to death. A gang war is threatened if his followers seek revenge. Her job, find the killers. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke king-size Fatima. Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. And that's why Fatima has a much different much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So, enjoy Fatima, the best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet. The documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Saturday, July 22nd. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. It was 10 p.m. when we walked out of the murder room at the Ferndale Sanitarium and went down to the end of the hall, the emergency room. I'm sorry. I know that's hurt. We have to irrigate the wound. Where are the bullets that were removed from Miss Stalling? Right on the table, Doctor. There they are, Captain Elliot. Thank you. Romero, you want a marker for evidence? All right. Uh, doctor? Yes, sir. wonder if it'd be all right if we asked Miss Stallings a few questions. I think so. She's still in a bad state of shock. It would be as brief as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Stallings, these men are police officers. This is Captain Elliot. This is Sergeant Flighty. All right? That's right. This is my partner, Sergeant Romero. Yes. You were in the room when Gus Valentine was shot? Yes. Do you feel up to telling us what happened? No. Excuse me, please. Surely. I have to paint this. Get a compress on it. You were visiting Valentine? So you better wait until the nurse finishes up there. All right, sorry. She got hit twice, just flesh wounds, but they're very painful. Yeah. Excuse me. Surely. You're all right. I can reach it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. You were in the room when Valentine was shot? Yes, I saw it. Did you get a look at the men that did the shooting? I don't remember. Did you describe them? I don't know. Are you sure you're feeling up to talking now? I don't know. Have you any idea who the men were? No. Maybe we can talk to you later. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. You hear me? You hear me? Nervous shock. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to upset her. You didn't. Thought maybe she might be able to help you a little, but I guess not. Better make it sometime tomorrow morning. She'll be all right then. Okay, thanks. I don't know if I saw him. I don't know if I saw him. How should I know if I saw him? How should I know? Let's go. Too bad. Better have an ambulance move her up to county hospital. I don't think you should try to move her tonight. She needs a rest. All right, we'll have a detail of men stand watch here till she's moved. What time tomorrow could we see her? And if you can make it close to noon, it'd be better. Good rest, she'd be all right. Better let me give you a ring. Right. Could you give us her full name and address? Yes, I have it right here. It's Ida May Stallings, 837 Downhill Street, Lindwood. All right, thank you. Anybody else here in the sanitarium see the shooting? Well, I saw the men. I couldn't describe them, just their backs as they ran down the hall after the shooting. How were they built, do you remember? About average, I'd say. Hard to tell. How were they dressed? Well, one of them was wearing a hat. Looked like some kind of summer hat. Straw? No, it was one of those, uh, what am I trying to say? You know the kind. Was it an open weave hat? No, um, well, you know, very common in the summer. You mean a Panama? Panama, should I was it? White. What kind of suits did they have on? I couldn't tell you. I was in my office when I heard the shots. I came out in the car and they were just making to the back door. Anyone else see it? Sylvia Proctor, the nurse who was in the room at the time. Why'd they kill her? I don't know. Any of the patients? Is it possible one of them might have seen him? Yes, one of them did see something. Bert Anderson. Like to talk with him? Yes, we would. And down this way, he's in room 38, just down the hall from the shooting. All right. 
I should tell you, Mr. Anderson lost a speech about nine years ago. He uses a child's slate to write on. Why is he here in the sanitarium? He's old, 73, lives on a pension. Except for losing his speech, he's as sharp as a high school boy. Hello, Bert. Sorry to bother you after all the excitement. Yeah, all right. We won't keep you up long. It's after your bedtime. Uh, would you hand me that box of chalk over there? Oh, yeah. Huh? Bert, these are the police officers. They want you to tell them what you know about the shooting tonight. Uh-huh, I thought you might have seen it. This is Captain Elliot from the Homicide Department. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? And this is Sergeant Friday. Is that right? Yes, sir. How are you, sir? And this is Sergeant Romero. How do you do, sir? Where were you at the time of the shooting, Mr. Anderson? Sitting in here with the door open. Uh -huh. Did you get a good look at the men? Uh, what'd they look like? Huh. Question, Nor. I don't think he understands what you want to know. Yes, that's a top. Uh -huh. Let's put it this way, Mr. Anderson. How many men were there? Uh, let's take one of these two men. Can you describe one of them? That's the way, Captain. That slate's rather small, and you can only get so much on it at a time. He's like all of us. He wants to talk fast, and this is the only way he knows, so we have to make it easy for him. I understand. Built like the captain. You're Bill Skipper. The same man had a thin mustache. That's all I can tell you about him. How about the other man, Mr. Anderson? Can you describe him? Please. What's that second word? I can't make it out. Understand. Uh -huh. They're running very fast. Thanks. Yes, we understand. Did you see the other man at all? Fine. What can you tell us about him? All he could see was... The man was wearing a hat. A white Panama hat, Mr. Anderson? He says, yes. Was there anything peculiar about the way they walked or ran? Or did one of them have a limp, for instance? Didn't notice anything. Says he didn't notice anything. Could you tell us anything about the men's faces? They, they passed by so quickly. I was worried about the gunshots. Yes, we can understand that, but do you think you could identify them if you ever saw them again? He says he could try. Could Mr. Anderson come downtown if we have a show up? Let me see why not, but gets around fine. Now well, he wants to know why they killed Miss Proctor, the nurse. So she was one of his best friends. We don't know, Mr. Anderson. Says so he wishes he could talk. Maybe he could help you more. It's all right, Bert. You talk loud enough. Monday, July 24th. A roundup of all known racketeers and their gang members was ordered by the chief of detectives. Three show-ups were scheduled. One at 10 a.m., one at 2, and another one at 3 p.m. The witnesses that we had were unable to identify any of the men. The incomplete descriptions we had of the suspects was not enough to help the artist in the crime lab to build a composite picture of the killers. No matter what approach we took, it seemed that we were getting nowhere. The immediate apprehension of the killers was not only important because of their danger to the private citizen, but because of the ever-present threat of an open shooting war between Gus Valentine's followers and members of the murder gang, whoever they were. 3.15 p.m. I got it. Homicide, Romero. Oh, yeah, they... All right, thank you. Crime lab. They make a run on those slugs you got at the hospital? Yeah. No match. Oh, that's great. How fouled up can it get? Yeah. Hi. Come on, slow motion. I'm with you. Hi, Rombo. Rombo's message here to call you why. Well, yeah, I better do it right away. Just know the skipper told Strami and me to work with you guys on the Valentine thing. We can use all the help we can get. Do you have your side phone number? Oh, yeah. Here you go. What's the matter? Change your mind? You let her ring once. She knows the signal. She's over at the mother-in-law's. Yeah? Mother-in-law's got lots of money and a limited phone. Let her call me. You got any ideas, Earl? Well, I don't know anybody who likes Valentine. A lot of them could have killed him. He's got word from the crime lab. There's no match on those slugs. And you didn't get anything out of the show-ups? No, no. Maybe that Stallings woman can give us something, huh? You haven't been out there yet? No, not yet. We've been sweating out the show-ups. Tommy and I read your reports. Rough go. We had an idea. Yeah. All of those times, boys, you didn't get around to yet. Who's that? Benny Davis. He was pretty close to him. Thought a lot of him. If anybody figures to take over his interest, it's probably Davis. Well, you think advancement could have been the motive for him? No, he wouldn't kill him. Anyway, he couldn't have. Just got in from Florida this morning. That mm. doesn't mean he couldn't have engineered it. Possible, but I doubt it. Stromy and I know his operation pretty well. Pulled him in on that Patterson killing six months ago. Checked back to his record. Never picked up carrying a gun. Well, it doesn't mean he couldn't get one in a hurry. I'm not going to guarantee, Davis, but I don't think he's your man, Joe. 
You got a line on him? He lives at the Churchill Arms out in Wilshire, uh, UCLA. All right, we'll talk to him. What was the name of that girl who was wounded, the one at the sanitarium? I had a man stolen. We'll go out and talk to her if you like. Fine. Who's going to see the Stallings woman at the sanitarium? We are. The doctor just called in from out there. Oh, yeah? Says she got something important to tell us. What do you think? She ran with Valentine. She knew his friends. Yeah. Maybe she knows his enemies. As we planned, Detectives Rombo and Stromwall went out to the Ferndale Sanitarium to talk to Ida Mae Stallings. Ben and I drove out to the Church Alarms apartments to see Benny Davis, one of Gus Valentine's close friends. He left a message with the desk clerk that he would be at his tailor's most of the day. The clerk gave us the address. It was an exclusive custom shop on Crescent Drive in the heart of Beverly Hills. Franklin Smith Limited it was one of those places that featured imported Scotch tweeds and fine English woolens. Good afternoon, gentlemen. May I serve you? Could you tell us if Benny Davis is in here? Uh, Mr. Davis. Uh, yes, sir. Third fitting room. Uh, to the rear, on your left. Thank you. Come on. Hmm. Look at that brown cloth over it, Joe. Yeah, that's a Donegal tweed. That's nice fabric. I had me one of them once. Where's that guy? Oh, yes. That's a little pinstripe. Certainly, if it's a great deal of the brown one, you can turn around. Yes? Yes. Excellent fit. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. I don't know if I like that right shoulder. Looks a little low, Mr. Davis. Excuse me? Oh, this fitting room's taken, gentlemen. Benny Davis in here? Yeah, what is it? What if we could see you alone? What about? Confidential. Uh, no, Cedric, not like that. Pull the shoulder up. More padding, maybe. Oh, do you think so? I, I don't know if I agree, Mr. Davis. Well, you can see how it slopes off there. Uh, I like a good full shoulder. Well, you've got a good full cut here. Of uh, course, too much padding is going to ruin the line of the jacket. I'd like more padding. Yes, yeah, very well. Uh, number two pad in the right shoulder and easy armholes. Number two pad, right shoulder, easy armholes. What is it, income tax? What's the secret? We're police officers. I'd like to talk to you alone for a minute. All right, be finished in a second. That takes care of this one, Mr. Davis. You want two-inch cuffs in the trousers? Yeah, no. Uh, Cedric, be sure to get these sleeves short enough. I'd like lots of linen to show. Oh, yes, surely. Now, if you'll slip on the green tropical. <laughs> okay. I'll take the jacket. Thanks. Hang on, tell me what it's all about. I'd rather talk to you alone. Here are the trousers. Okay. <clears throat> Good looking suit, huh? Fine. Yeah, I get all my stuff made here. I'll let Smith here make you a suit sometime. Got a fine suit of clothes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Here's your jacket, Mr. Davis. Right. There. Yeah. That, that looks fine. Yes, the trousers are just right. A little fullness in the back of the jacket here. Uh huh. And take in the center seam. Take in center seam. How much? And <clears throat> thin. Raise the back. Raise the back. Shorten mm. the collar. Shorten the collar. Yeah. Looks just fine. That's a nice soft roll of the lapels, isn't it? Yeah, good. All right, Mr. Davis. Now, how about the white Palm Beach? Nice Panama hat. It'd go good with that one. I never wear them. I like a coconut palm with a wide puggery band. I wonder if you could hold off the next fitting for a minute. We won't keep you long. All right. Any place around here where it's private? We can use Smith's office. Okay, Frank? Certainly. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Thank you. Which way? Back here. Okay, what's on your mind? Gus Valentine. Yeah, that's a tough one to lose. You got any idea who killed him? We're working on it. How do you mean? Just that. Well, that makes us even. There's only one difference. Yeah. We get paid for it, you don't. We thought a lot more of Gus than you did. Any law against striking down the killer? It's a law against shooting him down. Tell that to the boys who cut down Gus. I don't think you can get to him about us. We've done it before. You're a little late with Gus. We tried to keep him alive. We warned him for a month. He knew what was coming. We talked to him. Yeah, he told me. Funny guy. He had a mind of his own. He had a reason for not telling you. What was it? When we get there, we can ask him. You think you know who did it? Won't be too tough to find out. In the meantime, you can work it from your end. And if you get to him first... Maybe we'll give you a call. Now, you listen, Davis. I'll tell you the same thing we told Valentine. It's not open season for murder. This town's had all the shooting it's going to have. Valentine's killer's going to go to the gas chamber. That's the only way he's going to go. You understand? Nobody said any different. All right. Then you can tell us what you know. Who do you think shot Valentine? I can't be sure. You've got somebody in mind. There's a dame. Who? Audrey Thompson. What about her? She runs around with a couple of guys. Yeah? There's never any love lost between them and Gus. They were... Always talking big about what they'd do if Gus got out of line. What'd they have against him? Business. Claimed Gus was squeezing them out. Was he? I never knew much about Gus's out-of-town business. That's where these guys are from. They're new in town. Figured Gus was cutting them off out here in the coast. Who are they? Shaker Brothers. Bud and Carl. Where can we find them? 
I don't know. They're in town somewhere. What about this Audrey Thompson? Nice dame. Hard to figure. Husband died a year ago. Real nice woman. Been doing the town of the Shaker Boys. Nobody could figure it. You think she's in on it? No, but she could finger him if anybody could. Lives at 8700 North Toronto. All right, Davis, thanks. What's the new wardrobe for? Going east to catch a new Broadway show leaving Wednesday. Better hold off for a week, huh? All right. Come on, Ben. Think he's got anything? Could be. We'll run it down. Mm, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Hmm. Sure do like that brown cloth. It's nice. Yes, Sheldon, can I help you? Um, how long does it take you to make up a suit? Anywhere from three days to a week. Uh-huh. You interested in having us make one up for you? Yeah. Yeah, how do they run? Prices start from 175 and up. Miss Donegal Tweed here makes up for $250. Oh. Well, I guess not, thank you. Wears like iron. Four thirty p.m. We drove out to eighty-seven hundred North Serrano to the home of Audrey Thompson. There was nobody home. We went back to the office to check with Rombo and Stromwall. We drove in the Spring Street entrance of the City Hall garage. There's Rombo and Strom. They must have just got in. Hey, Rombo. Hi. How'd you make out? Stallings woman tell you anything? No, well, we talked to her. Think maybe we got a lead. What's that? Girl around town by the name of Thompson. Audrey Thompson? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What'd she say about her? That if anyone could put the finger on Valentine's killer, the Thompson girl could. Many Davis told us the same thing. What do you think, Earl? Two and two makes four. Let's find her. You are listening to Dragnet for the step-by-step solution to an actual police case. Here, step-by-step, are the reasons why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers from coast to coast. Step one. The name Fatima has always stood for the best in cigarette quality. Step two. Long cigarette smokers discover Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Step three. Long cigarette smokers find Fatima extra mild. Fatima is the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. And that's why more and more smokers every day agree it's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, the name Fatima on that golden yellow package is your insurance of an extra mild smoke. So enjoy King Size Fatima. The best of all long cigarettes. Five o'clock Monday afternoon. We tried for three hours to get in touch with Audrey Thompson. A few minutes after 8 p.m., we contacted her landlady. She told us that the Thompson girl was out of town and would be gone for two days. She didn't know where she'd gone, but she told us that she would be back. We checked her apartment and found all of her clothing and personal effects. A stakeout was placed at 8700 North Serrano, and then we went back to the office and got out a local broadcast on Audrey Thompson. Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock, Ben and I met with Captain Elliott, Detectives Rombo and Stromwall. Get a line on the Shaker Brothers? No, kid, them at the Eagle Towers apartments. Cut them under surveillance. I don't think it'd be a good idea to pull them in yet. See what the Thompson girl has to say, then we can move on them. That's what we figured. Yeah. Pull the packages on them? Yeah, they both got fair records. Been up on three wraps, one conviction, second degree robbery in Tulsa. That's where they're from. A couple of tough ones. Always ready to use a gun. Apparently got a lot of dough somewhere. They've been throwing a lot of money around town. Pick up any rumbles about them? Well, we've been nosing around. We can't get anything on them for sure. They're not known around here. Showing the mug shots of the Shaker Brothers to Mr. Anderson. The sanitarium. The doc, too. Yeah. Looks like the guys to them. Everything hinges on the Thompson girl. Check her out? Yeah, she used to be married to a newspaper man, Blaine Thompson. Died last year in an auto accident. No children. Went to high school here in town. Local girl. Reputation's good all the way. Why the sudden switch to tough guys? I don't think she knows. You satisfied Davis is leveling with you? Well, if he's not, he did a good job briefing the Stallings woman. They both came up with the same lead, the Thompson girl. We had him in on the Patterson killing. You remember that, Skipper? He cooperated then. That time it was his skin. This time it's not. Well, I laid it out for him. He's been told. Well, how's it feel to you fellas? Pretty quiet around town? Yeah, it seems to be. I wouldn't make book on what might happen if we don't wrap this thing up quick. I think after Joe and Ben gave Davis a word, he passed it down along the line. 
Anyway, it's an outside chance. Mm-hmm. Well, they just brought in the Thompson girl. They send her in. All right. Mm-hmm. You want to sit there, Miss Thompson? All right. Our detectives Friday, Romero. How do you Hello. do? Brambo, Rambo. How do you do? I guess you're wondering why you've been picked up. Yes, I was rather surprised. I was down at Palm Springs for a few days. I don't often get away. My boss gave me a two-day holiday. What do you know about the Shaker brothers, Miss Thompson? They're friends of mine. I go out with them. We have reason to believe they might be mixed up in a murder. I don't believe that. What's this all about? The Gus Valentine killing. Do you think they're mixed up in that? How well do you know the Shaker boys? Well, to be truthful, I don't know them at all, really. I met them at a dance. Who introduced you? Nobody. I go to the Brookdale Ballroom every Wednesday night with some of the girls from the office. It's open to the public. Crow Shaker asked me for a dance one night, and that's how I met him. You ought to pick your companions a little more carefully. Both of these men have criminal records. I didn't know that. You've been out with them quite a lot, have you? I've known them a little over a month, yes. Have they ever said anything that might lead you to believe that they were mixed up in any rackets? No, I never heard anything like that. You're sure you never heard them discuss any business dealings of any kind? Yes, I'm sure. You've been seen in quite a few night spots around Los Angeles with them, is that right? Yes, they always take me to some nice place. You always go alone with them? How, how do you mean? Which one of them do you go with? Bud or Carl? Well, I never really thought about it. Both of them, I guess. When you go out, they never take another girl along the party? No, just Bud, Carl, and myself. You go to most of the expensive clubs around town, is that right? Yes, like I said, we always go to some nice place. Do you ever wonder where they got the money? Well, they told me they worked for one of the aircraft plants. I thought you told us they didn't discuss their business with you. Well, I didn't consider telling me where they worked was discussing business. Did you consider that an aircraft worker's salary wouldn't even handle a cover charge at most of the places they've been taking you? No, I guess I was having too good a time to question. You see, Miss Thompson, you could spend a great amount of time with people and not remember things about them. Now, you sure you've told us everything you know about the Shaker Brothers? Yes. All right, that's all. If you find out something you think we should know, we'd appreciate it if you'd give us a call. Well, I won't be knowing anything about them because I'm going to stop seeing them. I didn't know they had criminal records. That's entirely up to you. I think it's only fair to warn you that if you do have any information you're withholding, it liable you to persecution. I understand. And I'm not going out with them anymore. I wouldn't let them know you've talked with us if... They are the men we're looking for. Might put you in danger. I'm not afraid of it. Neither was Gus Valentine. For the next ten days, Audrey Thompson, along with the Shaker brothers, was kept under close surveillance. It was obvious that she'd either lied to us or changed her mind. She continued going out with them. She was seen in all the important night spots around town. Thursday, August 9th, we met with Kristen Elliott. Skipper, maybe we better pull the Thompson girl in again for questioning. Let's hold off for a few more days. I'm afraid if we bring her down here again, the Shaker brothers could get wise. Since she decided to ignore what we told her, they might get rough with her. Why can't we move on them? Shake down their apartment. If we're lucky enough to come up with a murder gun, we can work from there. I don't think so, Joe. The record and only one conviction, I think we'd be playing a long shot. That's the way it looks to me, Earl. Maybe something will break if we can hold out just a few days more. Yeah, being watched awful close. If they try to move in any direction, our men will be with them. Mm-hmm. Friday. Yeah. Uh, can you stop out of here for a minute? Right. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Come back when you're through. Yes, sir. Yeah. The lady out here to see you. Thanks. Mr. Friday. Hello, Miss Thompson. I didn't stop seeing the Shaker boys. Yes, we know. What you men told me a couple of weeks ago just made me sick. To think I'd been going out with these men, been seen with them. I've never done anything like that in my life. Yes, ma'am. I decided to try and find out what you wanted to know. You didn't ask him any leading questions. Oh, no. I knew better than that. Last night we were out and they had a little too much to drink and they got to talk. Yeah. I didn't say anything. I let them talk and acted interested. Yeah. I confess now I'm terribly frightened. I spent the night with my sister-in-law. Could I stay here till you get this thing straightened out? Certainly. We'll give you protection, Miss Thompson. I wouldn't tell you. First they got to talking about some girl called... Ida May, I didn't catch the last name, said they wondered if she saw them at the sanitarium. Yeah. Said they wished they'd finished the job that night, whatever that meant. Then Bud said, I don't think she saw us or we'd have heard. Anything else? Yes. Carl said, did you see the look on Gus's face when we opened up? Then what? They laughed. I had a stenographer take Audrey Thompson's statement, and I filled in Captain Elliot, Rombo, Stromwall, and Ben. We checked the stake out on the Shaker Brothers' apartment. The suspects hadn't been seen since early that morning when they'd gone in. Detectives Rombo and Stromwall, together with Ben and I, drove to the Eagle Towers' apartments. It was 4.35 p.m. Stromy and I will go up the back way. 
We'll notify the men on stakeout. Keep a sharp eye all around. Right. Let's go. Apartment 410 is the top floor. Yeah. Let's take the elevator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Push floor. Right. Just thinking. Yeah. That Thompson girl, long on nerve. This way. Hmm. There it is. Cover me. Yeah. Yeah. Police officers. Well, yeah. Hit the door. Come yeah. on. Windows open to the fire escape. Come on. There they go over by the ventilator. Watch it. Armstrong and Rumble coming out the door under the roof. Rumble, watch it. They're up here. There goes one of them. Come on. All right, hold it right there. I give up. There goes the other one. He's making for that cable house. Stay with this one. I'll get him. All right, Shaker, let's put the gun away. You make a break onto the roof, they'll cut you down. Hold it, Shaker! Ah! You all right, Joe? Yeah. Did you shoot him? No. I was trying to make it to the roof. He grabbed that hot terminal over there and knocked him cold. Oh, yeah. Move your foot, will you? Yeah. What's that? White Panama hat. just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 19th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 89, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's amazing how many long cigarette smokers are changing to Fatima. Here is the actual report. From coast to coast, king-size Fatima has more than doubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day are discovering that Fatima is the best of all long cigarettes. Long cigarette smokers find Fatima has a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Long cigarette smokers find that Fatima is extra mild because it's the long cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. So enjoy extra mild Fatima. Best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Adolph Bud Shaker and his brother Carl Shaker were tried and convicted of murder in the first degree. On recommendation of the jury, they received life sentences. They are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary. You have just heard Dragnet, authentic cases from official police files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet from Los Angeles. Tomorrow, hear the Ronald Coleman's in the Halls of Ivy on NBC. NBC.